If you have your Bible today, please take it and open with me to one of the greatest verses of Scripture anywhere in the Word of God. I want you to turn to 1 Peter chapter 2 and the 24th verse. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24. Now, Peter is quoting from a glorious chapter in the Old Testament. He's quoting from Isaiah 53, where the great prophet Isaiah says, For he was wounded for our transgressions. That means you and me. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and as Peter will say, by his stripes ye were, past tense, already done, finished, healed. The passage in Isaiah 53 also says he bore our sorrows and he carried our pains. If you read after Hebrew scholars, many will say that that could have or should have been translated for he bore our sickness and he carried our diseases. Suffice it to say that all of our sin, all of our sickness, all of our spiritual death, all of our suffering, all of it was placed upon Jesus when he became a sin offering. And he hung on that cross, suspended between heaven and hell. And he took, before he went to the cross, 39 stripes from the lictor, which ribboned his flesh and ripped his flesh. And then they drove spikes and nails through his hands and his feet. And he hung there as the Lamb of God. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Well, ultimately, in heaven, there's no sickness either. He didn't just take away the sin of the world. He took away the the sickness of the world. He took away our spiritual death. He took away our separation from God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus on the cross was our substitute. It was a substitutionary, vicarious, atoning death. Jesus on the cross. So we come to our great text from Isaiah 53, quoted by Peter in 1 Peter 2.24. And Peter says, who? His own self. Nobody else could do it. Only Jesus was sinless. Only Jesus was spotless. So therefore, only Jesus could be the substitute. Only Jesus could be the Savior. His own self bear our sins in his own body. Now, he didn't die spiritually. His soul didn't die. But his physical body died. It was his shed physical blood on the cross. Hallelujah. His own physical body. That was the substitute. Galatians 3.13. The Bible says that Christ was made a curse for us. Galatians 3.13. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21 that he who knew no sin was made to be a sin offering for us, that we may be made the righteousness of God, a new creation in him. Again, only J Buddha couldn't do this because Buddha was a sinner. Muhammad couldn't do this because Muhammad was a sinner and a false prophet serving Allah who's not God, but Jesus Christ was sinless. Jesus Christ was a true prophet serving Almighty God, so he was uniquely qualified to hang and bleed and die on that cross, shedding his physical blood, having his physical body killed for you in your place. Hallelujah who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Hallelujah. God's already done it. God has already provided your deliverance. God has already set you free. God has already healed you. God has already forgiven you. Corinthians says God was in Christ Jesus reconciling to the world to himself, not imputing your iniquities, your sins, your transgressions against you. You were healed. This is the good news. It's already done. Instagram TV, Facebook TV, Twitter TV. It's already done, YouTube. 
Google. It's already done. Jesus has already done it. And he said in John 19, 30, it is finished. That means sin is finished. Satan is finished. Spiritual death is finished. Hallelujah. And sickness is finished. It is finished because Jesus paid the price. Jesus paid it all. And Jesus won the victory on the cross on the tree. A tree made man fall. It was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the forbidden fruit. But bless God, a tree restored the fall of man. At the Tower of Babel, God confused the languages. But at Pentecost, he brought them all together again. Glory to God. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the cross. I'm talking about what Jesus did for you. Every one of you watching me right now and listening to me right now, Jesus loves you. God loved you enough to send his own son to die for you on Calvary's cruel cross of Golgotha. So it doesn't matter how bad your sin is, how far you've fallen into sin, how much you've backslidden, how many people you've hurt. You may think you've ruined your life and your life is over. You may think God can't forgive you, but he can forgive you. If he can forgive me, he can forgive you. If he can forgive me, he can forgive you. Praise God, praise God, praise God. By his stripes ye were healed. But you know, it wasn't just Peter who quoted that amazing 53rd chapter of Acts. I want you to go in your Bible to the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to go to Matthew's Gospel and the 8th chapter. Matthew's Gospel, the 8th chapter. Sometimes Jesus is not a horse, but there's an old saying that says, it's got to come straight from the horse's mouth. And I want you to see what Jesus himself said about this great passage. Notice the 16th verse. Well, let's go to verse 14 just to get it in context. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand. He touched her hand. And the fever left her. And she arose and ministered to them. And when the evening was come, they brought unto him many who were possessed with devils, demons. And he cast out the spirits with his word, and he healed all who were sick. Now, now, how many of you know the will of God never changes? If it was the will of God to heal them, and if Jesus spent his life in ministry on the shores of the Sea of Galilee, healing the sick and casting out devils, if it was his will to heal them, it's his will to heal you. Don't ever question the will of God when it comes to healing. God is no respecter of persons. You are just as good, you are just as equal as these people, and the Bible said he healed all, not some, he healed all that were sick. And then I love the correlation in verse 17. And this goes right with our text in 1 Peter 2.24. He said that it might be fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, himself took our infirmities, now look at the translation, and bear our sicknesses, and bear our sicknesses, and bear our sicknesses. Here's the good news, and I want you to listen to me right now. If you've ever listened to a preacher, listen to me right now. Jesus bore your sins so you don't have to live in sin. And Jesus bore your sicknesses and your diseases on the cross in his physical body by his stripes so you don't have to bear them. You don't have to bear cancer. You don't have to bear COVID-19. You don't have to bear heart disease. You don't have to bear diabetes or hypertension or any other sickness or disease. The Bible said in the book of Acts how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Ladies and gentlemen, sickness and disease is a result of the fall of man and the sin nature. It's a result of the curse, but on the cross, the curse is reversed. Hallelujah. Listen to that again. On the cross, the curse is reversed. <laughs> Jesus reversed the curse when he hung and bled and died for you on the cross. So you may have tuned into me sick and diseased in your body. 
But James chapter 5 says, The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and he ha if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the promise of the Word of God. Do you believe the Word of God or what some dead, cold, denominational church and some backslidden preacher tells you? Oh, it's the will of God for me to be sick. No. That's not, you, you, you see, that's not what the Bible says. That's what religion says. That's what unbelief says. That's what doubt says. But it's not what the Word of God says. Well, Brother Mike, does God sometimes send sickness, disease, plagues, pandemics, pestilences as a correction, as a teaching, as a judgment? Yes, He does. And yes, He is. But the answer is found in James chapter 5. It says, before you pray the prayer of faith, confess your faults one to another. Confess your sins. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sin he's and forsake it and turn from it, repent of it, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and heal us from all unrighteousness. So if you do that, if you're under the blood, you have no past. It's as if your sin, your, your sin never even existed. It's lost in the sea of God's forgetfulness, separated as far as the east is from the west, and so therefore the penalty or the consequences of that sin, that's the sickness and disease, there was no sickness and disease before sin, it's gone. It no longer exists. And the devil brings it up and the devil condemns you. Well, you did this. You did that. You're no good. You just remind the devil of his future. Listen, when the devil brings up your past, you remind him of his future. He may roar like a, like a roaring lion, but he's not a roaring lion. He's a wimp whimpering little defeated little pussycat. You remind him, your future Mr. Devil is the lake of fire and brimstone. Your future Mr. Devil is an everlasting eternal hell, but my future is streets of gold. My future is walls of jasper. My, my future is streets of gold and it's mansions on high. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when I was putting this message together and praying about it, the Lord gave me a word for you. And he said to tell you this. He said, there's no better time to preach and to teach on my healing power and on my divine health than the time of plagues, pandemics, and pestilences. I'm going to say that again because it blessed me. And if it blessed me, I know it's blessing you. God said to me in prayer, there is no better time for you to preach and teach a message about my healing power, <laughs> my delivering power, and divine health than the time of plagues, pestilences, and pandemics. God told me to pray for the cancer patients. God told me to lay hands on the COVID patients, the patients with coronavirus. And God said, as, as he said in Mark 16, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Folks, that's a promise. That's a promise. And when God promises it, you can take it to the bank. If God said it, if God spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. Let every man be a liar, but let God be true. Now, I'm going to give you some scriptures that you can stand on. I'm going to give you some principles and some outlines that are going to make you shout. I don't care if you're a Southern Baptist, if you're a Methodist, if you're a Presbyterian, God's frozen chosen, <laughs> if you're Episcopalian or Roman Catholic, what I'm preaching to you today is going to make you dance in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! What I'm preaching today is going to make you shout and swing from the chandeliers and be a holy roller for God because I'm preaching truth that shatters sin, truth that shatters sickness, truth that shatters spiritual death and separation from God. I'm preaching truth that can change your life. I'm preaching the truth of the almighty, all-powerful, unlimited power of almighty God through the cross and the blood of Jesus Christ. Number one, I am healed by his word. I'm healed by his word. Turn your Bible to Psalm 107. And verse 20. 
Psalm 107, verse 20. And by the way, I'm a word person. <laughs> I'm a rhema man. Now you might not like me saying that. But what else in this life and the life beyond are we going to stand on if we don't stand on the Word of God? What, what else are you going to stand on? What, what else are you going to stand on? Heaven and earth will pass away. Jesus said, but, but my word. Matthew 24, 35 will never pass away. You can stand on the word of God. You can stand, stand it on the promises of Christ my King. Through eternal ages, let his praises ring. I'm standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. Verse 20, Psalm 107. He sent his word and he healed them. And he delivered them from the destructions. That's what Jesus did for you on the cross. Jesus Hallelujah. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, John 1 says, and the Word became flesh. And what did He do? He went to the cross, and on the cross, He healed you. Your healing has already been done. You don't have to cry out to God, Oh God, please heal me. Oh God, just receive your healing. Receive your healing. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, What things shall you desire? Healing. Believe. That you receive them. And you shall have them. Why? Because the word of God has already promised it. We are healed by his word. It's already done. It is a fact. That is faith. Faith is believing that which you don't see. Believing that which you don't feel. That which you don't heal. It is believing what the word of God says before it manifests in the physical realm. <clears throat> I'm healed by his word. But number two. I'm healed by his will. I am healed by his will. I want you to turn back in your Bible. We were just there. Let's go there again. Let's go back to the 8th chapter. The 8th chapter of Matthew. It said... Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Amen. It wouldn't say that if it wasn't God's will. If it wasn't God's will to heal or forgive or deliver or baptize you in the Holy Spirit or lead and guide you, then why would He promise it? There, there was an occasion in the Gospels where... Someone came to Christ and said, Lord, if you be willing, you can heal so and so and so and so. And Jesus said, I will. His life reveals his will. The word of God, ladies and gentlemen, is the will of God. And the word of God reveals the will of God. And the word of God is God talking to you. And if it was his will to heal that man on the day of Pentecost who had never walked, who was begging alms from Peter. And Peter came to him and said, Silver and gold have I none but such as I have. In the name of Jesus, rise and walk. And he who had never walked, the crippled, the paralytic, the Bible says he jumped and he left and he ran, praising God. And he was healed by the power of Almighty God. And if God did it for that guy on the day of Pentecost, he'll do it for you. Why? Because Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. The same Jesus who walked the shores of Galilee is walking right now, tapping you on the shoulder and healing you and saying, I am Jesus. What do you need me to do for you? The great physician still makes house calls. Dr. Jesus, that's who you need. Not Dr. Gupta. Not Dr. Tony, two, two masks, Fauci. You need Dr. Jesus. Dr. Jesus is in the house. I said, Dr. Jesus is in the house. I'm healed by his word. I'm healed by his will. And thirdly, 
I am healed by his wounds. When they put those lashes through his back, his, those stripes that Peter talks about, when they ribboned his flesh, when they ripped his flesh, the purpose was that you and I and everybody could be healed. I'm healed by his wounds, by his stripes. I am healed. Doesn't that make you happy? Praise God. We are facing a time in which the mark of the beast and the chip, the number of the beast, the name of the beast, the image of the beast are coming. They're going to be introduced and they're going to be rolled out. And part of that is going to be, unless you sign up and enlist in that satanic system, they're going to take away your Medicare. They're going to take away your Obamacare. They're going to take away your Blue Cross and Blue Shield. So as a result of that, it is a very timely time to preach a message on divine healing and on divine health. Now, isn't that? that's a good place to say amen. You must begin to rely on God's medicine, divine healing, and divine health. They're going to take away your social security. So you better be sure you have eternal security. I understand they're going to take away your health plan and your health benefits unless you take that mark of the beast, 666, without which you can buy or sell. So you better start learning how to trust God and how to believe God now. Let me tell you some more, something else. And I want you to take notes. If you're watching at home, I want you to do your homework and write these outlines down. Write these notes down because it could save your life. What I'm preaching today is more important than anything anybody else is preaching or teaching. It's more important than what any politician or any psychologist will tell you because this could save not only your eternal life in heaven, but your physical life right here, right now. This is God's plan. This is God's script. This is God's Rx plan. This is God's prescription for you. We are healed, number one, by his book. By his book. What have I been quoting this entire message? The Bible. The Word of God. The Bible is God speaking to you. And what does it say? Way back in the Pentateuch of Moses, it says, I am Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. I am the God who heals thee. It is the very nature of God to heal. He wants to heal. You are healed by his book. You are healed by his book, James 5. The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. But not only are we healed by his book, we are healed by his blood. We are healed by his blood. Leviticus 17 talks about the blood of Jesus. 1 Peter 1, 18. We are redeemed not by corruptible things like silver and gold, but how are we redeemed? How are we bought back? How are we purchased? By the precious blood of Jesus, the lamb without spot or without blemish. We are healed by his book. We are healed by his blood. And third, we are healed by his broken body. I read it to you in our text. Hallelujah. He bare our sin and our sickness in his body on the tree that we be in dead to righteousness, that we be in dead to sin, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. So the beast is coming. His image is going to rise. So when that comes, you're not going to be able to buy, sell, trade, or exchange without it. Certainly that includes health care, doctors, hospital, emergency services, prescriptions. So what you got to do is learn to replace Blue Cross and Blue Shield with the cross of Christ. Amen. And you have to learn how to use the shield of faith 
Because Ephesians 6 says, with the shield of faith, you can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Cancer is a fiery dart of the wicked. Heart disease, tuberculosis, diabetes, hypertension. These are fiery darts of the wicked. The coronavirus, COVID-19, is a fiery dart of the wicked. But Ephesians 6 says, with the shield of faith, hallelujah, with the helmet of salvation, with the breastplate of righteousness, glory to God, your feet shod with the gospel of the preparation of peace. You can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. I'm talking about victory. I'm talking about freedom. I'm talking about deliverance. I'm talking about the power of God through the cross to live above sin, to live above sickness, to live above bondage and captivity and habits and addictions and to live a life of sanctification, holiness, and healing in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You want more? One, I'm healed by his sayings, the scriptures. <laughs> Mark 16, the Great Commission. Ye shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. You shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. You shall lay hands on the sick. And not they might recover. If it's the will of God, maybe they'll recover. No, no, not hope so. No, they shall recover. That's faith. That's positive. That's the word of God. I'm healed by his sayings, the scriptures. But not only am I healed by his sayings, the scriptures. Number two, I'm healed by his sovereignty and by his supremeness. Hallelujah. Philippians says the name of Jesus is the name above all names. Hallelujah. And at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Every knee must bow. Well, cancer must bow. COVID must bow. Coronavirus, heart disease, hallelujah, diabetes, hypertension, whatever it is, it must bow. Uh, opioids, fentanyl, alcohol, tequila, cocaine, heroin, covetousness, lust, pornography, whatever addicts you and binds you and holds you in captivity must bow to the name above every name. The name of Jesus is greater than COVID-19. I am healed by his sovereignty, by his supremeness. The Bible says, the greater one, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. His name is Jesus Christ, not the former Virgin Mary, not the false prophet Mohammed, not Buddha, not the Dalai Lama, not Mr. Mormon or Mr. Sung Young Moon, but Jesus Christ, the name above all names, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Lily of the Valley, the bright and morning star, the rose of Sharon, Jesus Christ is greater. He is the greater one. He is greater and he is still the answer for whatever you need. Not only am I healed by his sayings, the scriptures, by his sovereignty, his supremeness, but I am also healed by his stripes, as I've already told you, by his ribboned backside from our text. So, as you lose Obamacare and Biden care and Medicare, you got to find Jesus' care. Amen. you got to find the master's care instead of Medicare. And you have to make the great physician, Jesus Christ, your primary physician, your primary provider, and your specialist for every need that you face mentally, physically, domestically, financially, in every way. A tree, as I told you before, brought forth a great curse on mankind in Genesis. It brought a, de a devastating fall. However, a far greater tree has brought us unbelievable, unthinkable blessings upon the lost sons of Adam and Eve's lost race. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, the lost sons of Adam's race by grace can have everything restored that Adam lost in the garden. Because of Mount Calvary's glorious cross of Christ upon Golgotha, from the place of a skull proceeds resurrection. Listen to me. From the place of a skull called Golgotha proceeds resurrection. I want you to notice 
that all of these things are His, not ours. His word, His will, and His wounds. Amen. We can't do this. That's why it's grace. It's God's riches at Christ's expense. It's, it's unmerited favor. It's the love of God. It's the mercy of God. It's His book, His blood, His body, not mine. I can't heal a fly. I can't do anything without Him. I am broken. It's all Him. It's not self. It's the Savior. It's His sayings, His sovereignty, His stripes. It's Him. It's His, not ours. Healing is all of Him and none of us. He and He alone is my healer and is your healer. And listen to me. As you lose your social security, you need to understand how to acquire divine security. Or are you listening to me? El Shaddai, Almighty God, is enough. And He is all you need. You don't need anything above and beyond God. He is all you need. Hallelujah. And so I'm going to close with one more set of, of truths and one more outline. I'm trying to build your faith. Faith comes by healing and faith comes by hearing and the word of, hearing the word of God. That's why I'm giving you the word of God. I'm pouring the word into you. That's what you need. You don't need worldliness. You don't need whiskey. Listen to me. You don't need women. Are you, are you listening to me? All you need is the Word. All you need is the Word. Jesus is the answer. Not money, not power, not control, not fame. Jesus, 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 the Master. He is all you need. So as I begin to close today, I'm going to tell you, I am healed by His truth and by His teachings. Hallelujah. Jesus said in John chapter 8, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Well, praise God, part of being free is being free from cancer. Totally can't. And I speak that to you. I curse that cancer. I curse that cancer in your body. Every type of cancer from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. And I command it to die from the roots and pass from your body and leave your body. And I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over cancer right now. I curse COVID-19. As you repent and confess of your sin, I curse coronavirus at the roots and I command that virus to die and pass from your body. You will live and not die in the name of Jesus Christ. And whatever affliction is afflicting your body in the name of Jesus, I curse it, I rebuke it, and I command, I bind it, and I command it to pass from your body. And now Lord Jesus Christ, let the power of Almighty God flow to everyone hearing me right now eradicate the sickness, drive out the disease, and bring complete healing by the power of Almighty God. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity. I rebuke the spirit of infirmity and command it to leave your body as I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over you right now. In Jesus' name, pray in the prayer of faith, you are healed. Now speak it. Say it. I believe I'm healed in the name of Jesus according to the Word of God. Forget about your feelings. Forget about how you feel. Forget about what you see, what you smell, what you hear, what you taste, what you feel, and believe only what the Word of God says. By His stripes, you are healed. Have some faith. Oh, ye of little faith, have some faith. Have faith, the grain of a mustard seed. Glory be to God. I'm healed by his truth, his teachings. Number two, I'm healed by his triumph. Colossians 1, Colossians 2, Hebrews 2, over and over, Peter and Paul and James and Jesus himself says Calvary was not a defeat. Calvary, the cross, was not past miseries. Calvary was the victory. Calvary was when Jesus shouted, it is finished. When Jesus shouted with a strong voice the cry of the cross, it is finished. Calvary was a defeat and you are healed because on the cross, the Bible said that Jesus defeated the devil. The Bible says that Jesus spoiled principalities and powers and he made an open show of them. First John said, for this purpose the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the one who had the power of death. That is the devil. Hebrews 2 says that Jesus by death on the cross destroyed the one who had the power of death. That is the devil. We are healed by his triumph. And thirdly, I am healed by his tree. 
Hallelujah. Galatians 3, 13. Look it up. I am redeemed from the curse of the law because Jesus was made a curse for me on the tree that I could become <laughs> the son, the seed of Abraham. I am healed by his tree, the tree of Calvary. Dear friend, you need God's economy. You need to understand that God is the one who sends the manna from heaven and the one who gets the water out of the rock. You need to begin to confess, I am free because Jesus died for me. Say it with me. I am free because Jesus died for me. I am healed because Jesus died for me on the tree. I am delivered because Jesus died for me on the tree. The red blood of the cross is the title of this message. And I'm, I'm teaching you the benefits. The benefits. You're talking about a benefit plan at work. <laughs> the benefits. All the benefits of serving God. The greatest health care plan. Hallelujah. The greatest insurance plan. I'm not just talking about fire insurance so you won't go to hell. I'm talking about divine health insurance. Divine health. I'm talking about living above addiction and bondage and captivity. I'm talking about the life of being filled with the Spirit of Almighty God. Instead of the spirits of alcohol and, and, and drugs and demons and devils and all that. I don't know if this has blessed you as much as it blessed me. But I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, about, to get, I'm about to get happy. I'm about to have an old-fashioned brush arbor spell. Somebody, some liberal the other day said, oh, you need to be woke. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> you don't need to be woke like AOC and Bernie Sanders and President Biden talk about, you know what we need? We don't need to be woke. We need a new spiritual awakening. We need a new great awakening. We need a new great awakening. We need the power of God to shake this world again so we quake and fear and tremble in the fear of Almighty God. That's what we need. We don't need more movies from Hollywood. We need the moving and the operation of God, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That's what we need. Praise God. I'm so happy you joined me today. And oh, I, just, I, just, I just love you. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad you're following me. You're friending me. You're a fan. I'm so glad that you're watching. You're tuned in. Stay tuned. There's nothing anywhere else. Until I talk to you again, if, if, if you need prayer or counseling further, 703-405-1942. And I'm serious. Call or text me 24-7. 703-405-1942. If you're a pastor and you'd like this kind of teaching, glory to God, this kind of preaching in your church, or if you're in charge of a camp meeting or a conference or a company or a convention, and you want this kind of preaching, glory to God, anointed preaching, not for money, but for the glory of the Master. To the praise of His glory and grace, all you have to do is call me or text me 24-7-703-405-1942. So until I talk to you again, God bless you, I love you, and remember, Jesus Christ is the only Lord. Amen. God bless you.